So we are straight into VLN3 qualifying 2019. This is probably one of the craziest onboards that I have in my 20 years of racing. So I'm not gonna to say too much right now, uh, but the instructions from the team were, the rain is coming, David, get out there and get a lap in before it starts to rain. And I think this video perfectly summarizes driving a GT3 at the Nordschleife in the VLN Championship with all the combinations of cars. So yeah, sit back and enjoy these highlights. It really shows how literally no two laps are the same because you're constantly having to adapt your braking points, positioning on circuits to navigate the circuit as much as you can and try and anticipate people's driving. As we'll see now, where an indecision almost leads to a shunt, uh, but luckily the M6 was able to stop quick enough before uh, ending up in the back of it. Anyways, this lap was good enough for P5 in qualifying. Um, however, the rain would come and then we would start the race in wet conditions. So this is actually me starting the VLN3, but this is the first time I've driven the circuit in the wet. So I've done my homework and I like to think I know where I'm going. However, it proved to be quite the baptism of fire. Starting the race, I am confident in my wet driving ability. And um, so I knew that I could do something from starting P6, which was a really good starting position. However, I got kind of boxed in behind the GTR and then I'm driving the Yokohama wet tyres for the first time. Uh, so, slightly ambitious entry speed there as I tried to follow others in at a similar speed. Same again, trying to follow the car other cars in but just having no bite from the tyre, no traction from the tyre and getting absolutely mugged, if I'm honest, which was quite disappointing. So I was kind of putting it down to cold tyres, however we did drop a long way out of the top 10 as a result of it. However the Yokohama tyres proved a good good tyre to be on in these damp conditions as you can see here. So this is now sort of two and two and three quarters away around um, the second lap and um, yeah we're sticking with the Michelin Rover car and one of the get speed Mercedes as well. So this shows that the Yokohama in these damp conditions actually had good pace and our prediction for the race was that it was going to dry out. However the rain started to come again at the beginning of lap 3 and I've just been passed by one of the Black Falcon Mercedes and um, even though I enter quite closely onto the launch life behind him see just through the hats and back complex unfortunately the lack of pace that we had once the tyre dropped out of its operating window um, and yeah try as I might to try and maintain the corner speed that the Michelin cars had um, yeah it wasn't happening so unfortunately I dropped quite a long way back again As with the Nordschleife, the conditions change very quickly. There's only barely a few corners after the Hatzenbach complex at Metzgefeld where the standing water had started and I had got away very, very lucky to get away with this moment as much as I did. I just aquaplaned off at the apex and you can see the standing water here, which is now becoming a big issue. This is now later on in the lap towards the Stefan Belafesses where it is absolutely chucking it down. Uh, and by this point here, it's again, I'm just an absolute sitting duck, as it were. Here, the Falcon Porsche nips down the inside of me, and uh, I've just got nothing to answer to him in terms of traction. 
uh, in terms of the aquaplaning ability of the tyre. Even down the dotting of her here, I let the Falcon M6 pass, I back off and even have a touch of oversteer under the bridge there at 210k, which is pretty mad. Uh, and yeah, and then the rain really came down. In the live broadcast, um, the advertising was unfortunately timed, as you can start to see the carnage that then ensued. The Fricadelli car has got going again. That was the, not the Fricadelli, sorry, I've got to get used to the wavy colour scheme. It's uh, Dennis Olsen, oh, Dennis Olsen. Racing. Also, also off the Spray on the roof and one of the Mercedes GT3 cars. cars. That's the 12 car. Oh, oh, no. oh. And the, is that the Schnitzer car? Is that Van der Linde? We can see the tail end. It's careened into the barriers. It won't show us its number, but that's uh, sliding backwards on the grass. It's the 36, I think. That's for the Walking Horse white car. Correct. That that so as you saw, I had a moment in that previous shot, and this is that moment. Tire, small amount of aquaplaning at a pretty high speed part of the circuit. Lost the rear end one way. Caught it initially, but then just couldn't catch the snap back. And looking back on it now, I'm pretty lucky to have got away with it as much as I did uh, with just a glancing knock onto the barrier. I was able to turn the car around and get it going. This is the Tiergarten chicane, so it's barely 500 meters from pit entrance. All that steam is just um, water on the engine evaporating. However, you might be able to see that the steering is pretty broken by this point here, and the impact that I had had done some damage to the steering rack as well as the front hub. Uh, and unfortunately, that meant uh, game over for the 34 car um, just at the very end of lap three. So yeah, it was a pretty crazy um, day, as you can see from the conditions. Um, well, I wasn't the only car to go off, and it was a um, pretty mad few minutes, really. And that was the crazy thing. It was only a few minutes. It, um, had it gone on longer, they may have had to stop the race, but as it um, was literally a cloudburst and so much water came down so quickly, um, yeah, there was no time to react effectively accordingly. Uh, and yeah, that was the end result, which was a big shame. So yeah, um, hugely disappointed for of myself, and hugely uh, disappointed to have let the team down. So yeah, came back to the garage, and the team quickly assessed the damage, but quickly worked out that it wasn't possible to fix. Germany saw so seven areas now with code sixty, uh, and seven with slow zone. So. That's a Tiergarten start and finish, Flansgarten, Kesselschen, Donegahoe, Eisbach, and a second issue for the 12 Porsche. It's Dennis Olsen, we saw him, he knew his way around the barriers. Oh, he's, he's ripped off the under piece of the front end of that car, and there's, that's the get speed. Get speed, get speed. And then to give you another contrasting Nürburgring weather update, this is the same race but about three and a half hours later this is the going on to the final laps and there's a dry line and the car goes back to slicks again and it's blue sky so yeah it was pretty crazy conditions uh, to adapt so quickly to and uh, yeah unfortunately um, we didn't survive the worst of it to then make it through to the end of it which is what endurance racing is all about so yeah massive disappointed big shame uh, but yeah, that's racing. Uh, I hope you like this video. If you do, give it a like. And if you like to see more content like this, please make sure you subscribe to our channel. Catch up with better news next time, hopefully. Ciao, ciao.